Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about Mythic Markets' response to Alpha Investment's video. Now, before Alpha Investment made the video, Mythic Markets was only really talked by very few people, typically those in, who have interest in MTG Finance. Definitely not the wider appeal. Now, I, it, would it surprise me if Mythic Markets approached Alpha Investments directly for some type of sponsorship? Absolutely not, because that is what PukerTrade did to me, not once, but twice. And that's what they did to Tularian Community College, Unsleeved Media. All of them have videos, uh, weds. Everyone in their grandmother who was a YouTube content creator at that point was approached by PukerTrade. I have the email to prove it. And I even have the pay structure, if you will. And after PukerTrade goes down, which we clearly know why, because they spent all their money on alcohol, clubbing, Las Vegas trips, and you know, 5000 bucks into the pocket of the CEO right before he left. Sounds very similar to a company that I that is having trouble now. WeWork was going to IPO at $47 billion, and today it is valued at $2.9 billion. It lost essentially more than $44 billion in the span of six months or less. Mm. Interesting, these tech companies, of course. Um, so here is a very, so I've shown you, they show cosplayers, they show amazing comics, they're showing Pokemon, first edition. Their marketing portrays that they would sell basically any collectible of value, right? They're not just Magic the Gathering. But why, after the Black Lotus was successful, did they do, I think, a far inferior product, which are the boxes, the $55,000 of boxes? The answer is very, very clear. Um, Ma they think Magic players are suckers. No other community, be it sports memorabilia, be it anime figure collection, be it vintage video game collectors, would ever fall for something like this. Alpha Investments is absolutely right. Uh, he is absolutely correct on this. His video, even though this uh, Mythic Markets, um, to do them justice, I'm going to include their complete responses, but I do not agree with their responses for uh, a few reasons. Number one, they're not making it easy for you to understand. And whenever a company does that in length, it's kind of like an apology letter. Instead of just saying, I'm sorry, they say like all of these things and they try to confuse you. They point at, you know, documents and letters, but really it's a very simple concept. Instead of answering the question in plain English, which they refer to as, you know, they refer to the jargon and so on, they have confounded the problem so no one can understand what the response means. And they're hiding behind this legal jargon and this uh, investment jargon. So they got $2 million uh, for some percentage of their company, I assume 10% or less if they were smart. So they're valued at $20 million. That's what I think they're valued at uh, based on the first round of investment. I don't think you give more than 10% up in Series A, especially this early on. So they went out there and they said, you know what? We are going to prove, we're going to prove the concept. Let's do the Black Lotus. They did Black Lotus. It worked. Uh, people clapped and great. You know, congrats. They did a Black Lotus. Congrats. Uh, next, um, they did the $55,000 of booster boxes, which aren't even, you know, a good, that's not even a good deal. Like, it is not a good deal. If I had to pay 50, I would never pay $55,000 for those boxes they listed because you can get them for 40, 45,000, maybe even less. Now, when you talk about Mythic Markets and you talk about Pico Trade and you talk about the Chapman fella on Wire, Wire that took $10,000 and just uh, went on vacation with it, you talk about Pico Trade in Las Vegas and the drinking and 
they don't act and behave like real companies. So PicoTrade, for instance, when they needed to build a website, they go funded me that. Very few real companies are going to go fund me a website because that's just considered one of your business expenses, right? Then they go funded me a, a, a new website update. They needed a developer. So instead of paying, the, obviously they couldn't pay the developer and Pico points is what they were doing to their current employee. Uh, I don't want to use employees, current vendors, if you will, uh, content creators, article writers, uh, Tolarian Community College, WEDS, they were all paid in Pico points. They were not paid in money. And it was far easier to say, hey, you want what you want? 100,000 Pico points? Here you go. Than even give a dollar because again, Pico Trades is an imaginary form of currency that can be created at the discretion of the CEO. There is no one to govern how Pico points are created or even if uh, what their cash value is. If you believed, if you believe Pico Trades CEO when he made his pitch to the investors said that a hundred Pico points would always be equivalent to a dollar. Mm-hmm. That did not turn out so well. And we all know why that is the case, um, because it was a lie. So we have a lot of these companies approaching Magic the Gathering, but like, why do these companies, especially this one, why do they not do Pokemon, comics, anime figures, uh, video games? They have cosplayers, like what What are they doing? Esports teams, they supposedly are going to do fractional ownership of that as well, according to their website. Why prove, why, after the Black Lotus is successful, why make another Magic product? Why don't you go into comic books or a, remember Magic the Gathering out of all these uh, areas of collectibles is probably the smallest interest in terms of a wide base. Their website, the first thing you see is a bunch of Marvel cosplayers. Then the second thing you see is a comic book of Spider-Man. When they advertise on Facebook, which they do, their ads are first edition Pokemon booster boxes. Like, n when you go on a Facebook, none of it is really magic related. So why target the magic consumer? It's because the magic consumer is very, how should I say it? They are more likely to be part of a scam than not. How many Magic players were conditioned to do Pico Trade? I'm asking you a real question. How many Magic players used Pico Trade? Can we all agree that Pico Trade is kind of a scam? Is it a pyramid shape? Is it a triangle? Who cares? It, I think the scam came with the inflation, that they could just inflate points whenever they wanted to, and there's no, I mean, there's nothing that stops them, you know, from just destroying the economy. Like, what would possibly stop them from doing that? Nothing. They can just keep pumping points in for no reason. Mythic Markets, Rudy got it absolutely right. Um, but I think he's missing the key element because maybe Rudy doesn't have the ex experience that I do about uh, investing funding. So I have a lawyer. Um, I used a lawyer previously. His name is Daniel DeWolf. He's very famous. He wrote the book on venture capital that they use at NYU Law, which is a top 10 law school in the nation. And what he said is very interesting. Uh, we pay him $800 an hour just to talk. Hang out, if you will. You don't actually care about your first, in your first investor is looking to get out as soon as they can get out. So they're going to sell, they're going to buy at a good price and then they're going to sell to another dumb investor and then so on and so forth. And that's how you get a company like WeWork, which was going to IPO at $47 billion with ever, that company was losing hundreds of millions of dollars a year. And it has $47 billion of debt on the books from rent, future rent that they owe landlords. How is that type of company possible without dumb investors? So I don't think they're trying to scam magic players necessarily. 
they need to do so to scam the bigger whales, which are the investors. And they've already taken $2 million. They've already taken these investors to town. Now, the question for these investors is, can we somehow flip our $2 million to four? Is there a dumber person out there? And the answer is yes. So I think that's the part that Rudy kind of doesn't really understand about this. It's not about actually selling this product. Yes, you do need to sell it to um, the dumb, dumb magic players, but you need to prove the concept. As soon as you're done proving concept, bam, your valuation goes up. You prove the concept again a second time, bam, valuation goes up. Instead of a $20 million company, now you're a $200 million company. Now you're a $2 billion company. Investors are really dumb. I've had investors myself on my own marketing company, and they were so dumb. I was like, holy crap. Like, oh my gosh. Like, and they, all they talk about is flip, flip, flip. Let's gotta, we got to flip. We got to flip. And we would hire all these employees. One, these employees would be the, uh, let me get this correct. They're gr the investor's grandmother's friend's nephew. So we had a whole bunch of employees, which were just nepotism, right? And then when we, had our, when we pitched to a new investor, we would say, oh, well, we have 12 employees, full-time employees, even though 10 of them were totally useless because they were <laughs> related somehow to the investors. And then the new investor would be like, oh, wow, that's really impressive for a marketing agency of, that's only a year old. All right, I'll put in some more money. So it's a game. It is a game within a game. And gosh, this company sucks. Bye, <laughs> guys.